Good afternoon, everyone. In this section, I'll cover our commitment to driving a sustainable impact through our sea strategy, our approach to ESG, and managing climate risk. We will then turn to the panel discussion with Mercia, Chief Executive of Standard Bank Namibia, and Sasha, Sustainable Finance Executive. We hope to bring to life what this means in a Standard Bank context and provide some concrete examples of how we are making a positive impact through financial services. As Sim mentioned earlier, when you look at today's investor landscape, there is no denying the importance of environmental, social and governance concerns to Standard Bank and to our investors. Being more than a bank, driving sustainable and e inclusive economic growth is part of our purpose. Africa is our home. We drive her growth. As noted in the three client segment presentations, we fully recognize the impact of our business activities on the societies, economies, and environments in which we operate, and as such have embedded social, economic, and environmental, what we call C, considerations into our decision-making processes, as well as our progress measurement framework. The economic value we generate for our shareholders should be underpinned by the creation of value for society. This is at the core of who we are and how we do business. Our C strategy incorporates the UN Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2063, and other sustainability frameworks. We're also aligned to the Paris Agreement and are a founding signatory to the Principles for Responsible Banking. The principles set the global benchmark for what it means to be a responsible bank. They make it clear that the bank indicators of impact and success should be much broader than their financial results. We are co-chair of the Banking Board, which is responsible for overseeing effective implementation of the principles and are proud to be amongst 240 banks leading the charge for a more sustainable world. A large part of our strategy involves prudent ESG risk management. Best practice in this regard is the foundation for delivering on our C impacts. We have reviewed and restructured our governance systems and processes to ensure we are aligned with global good practice in respect of ESG risk management, including climate-related risk management. In the last two years, we have refreshed our approach to ESG, established a dedicated sustainable finance unit, published a series of policies that guide our approach to thermal coal mining, coal-fired power, and financing fossil fuels, published two TCFD reports which focus on our material sectors and participated in industry level initiatives to improve our climate risk management and published our own sustainable bond framework. We have committed to publishing our climate risk strategy on our next TCFD disclosure. This climate strategy will set and publish science-based short-term, medium-term and long-term climate targets to support meeting the goals of the Paris Agreement and the goal of net zero carbon by 2050. Our approach to climate target setting is based on support for a just transition and the need to address Africa's energy needs. While we have made some significant progress and reached a number of milestones, we are committed to making an even further progress and doing substantive work in navigating the complexity and the trade-offs required to fully integrate ESG and drive sustainable impact. To talk about how we are putting the C strategy into action, we've invited incredibly well-regarded journalist Lerata Mbele to host a panel discussion with some of our Standard Bank leaders on how they're working to make a sustainable impact in their respective areas. Over to you, Lerato. And thank you very much for that generous introduction, David. Welcome everyone to Standard Bank's panel on our commitment to driving Africa's growth, putting it into action. As you well know, the African continent continues to grapple with many social, economic and environmental challenges. And the COVID pandemic has made that even more pronounced by exposing the vulnerability of healthcare systems. It's disrupted schooling, it's affecting food production, and it's also affecting supply chains for factories and retailers. Now, this experience has really amplified the need to find homegrown solutions and also the need to place communities at the center of all economic programs. Standard Bank puts C at the core of its work across Sub-Saharan Africa. And during this discussion, we'll be exploring several projects that are currently underway across South Africa and Namibia, initiatives that are bringing Standard Bank's C and ESG strategies to life. 
Now joining me to uh, discuss the impact of these projects, we're joined by Mercia Gaisis, who's the chief executive of Stanham Bank in Namibia. She's also joined by Sasha Cook, who's the sustainable finance executive at Standard Bank. Now let's get started with this fascinating initiative that's currently underway in Namibia. And Mercia, let's start with you. I know you've recently partnered with MIT Center for Bits and Atoms and also with the architectural firm Red House to develop a sustainable economic and social ecosystem in Namibia. Could you tell me more about this, please? Thank you very much for the opportunity. I would start by talking to the why. Why Namibia would be so optimally placed for an opportunity and a partnership with MIT and the Red House Architects. Namibia is an arid country that has got scarce water resources and we are experiencing bush encroachment at a massive scale. Now bush encroachment results in the lack of biodiversity and also limits groundwater recharge in the effective areas. Just to give you context on the scale of the problem, more than 50% of the country's land area is covered with encroacher bush. Now we have found this encroacher bush to be an enormous natural resource that is estimated at more than 400 million tons of sustainably harvestable biomass. So we started our journey with biochar, which is sustainable charcoal, and we've become one of the top 10 charcoal ex exporting countries in the world. Then we went into the biomass and its conversion to energy, and we've seen many of our industries now fueling their operations with biomass. Then we followed the journey into biofodder, which where we've converted this biomass into animal feed, and now naturally the Biohub partnership with MIT and the research teams that are working with us on that. We are privileged to work with MIT to research the potential of unlocking the opportunity of producing sustainable building materials by using encroacher bush to grow mushrooms. Now the mushrooms are grown and harvested and the material that is left behind is compacted into sustainable bricks as a first phase. There's lots more to come um, from this research. So we've established a research and development site just outside of Vintuk, which will also function as a training facility for MIT's lab free, um, uh, label free research group and also for the International Network of Biofab Labs. It is also open to Namibians that are seeking for new learning opportunities yeah. and we're looking forward to exploring the ecosystem opportunities that this initiative provides. Mercia, it just sounds to me like there's so much bounty in Mother Nature, so much that we don't see that um, we can benefit from and that there's no such thing as waste. All things are potential wealth. Staying with what you said, Mercia, what is Standard Bank's involvement, though, in the Biohab project? Thank you. So apart from the country context that I've just given you and the role that we have played as a bank in the biomass sector, we have our flagship CSI initiative, which is the BioBrick program, which we've been running in partnership with the Sheikh Dwellers Federation in Namibia. Now, BioBrick has a vision of a Sheikhless Namibia, and the BioHub initiative is so complementary to our quest, quest for accessing and providing affordable housing solutions to approximately 500,000 no to low income Namibians that are living in informal settlements. And we believe that the Biohab initiative has got all the potential to solve for this. The funds that are collected through the bank's philanthropic efforts are distributed to the Sheikh Dwellers Federation of Namibia, who have already assisted us in building more than 650 houses in the country since we've started out. So far, about 100% of the proceeds that were derived from the sale of the mushrooms that we are producing at the Biohub facility as an experimental and research and development site has been donated to our Biobrick Foundation to fund some of the initiatives that we have in partnership with the Sheikh Dwellers Federation. All right, so it sounds to me like this is an alignment between country, company, and the community, making sure that everybody benefits. Let's move on to you, um, Sasha. And moving on to a topic that's also of great interest lately, uh, sustainable finance. Why do you think that it's been such a huge focus for investors and corporates lately? Thanks, Lorato. The pandemic has really demanded new approaches and new ways of looking at economic development and highlighted the importance of sustainability 
as well as raising the focus on ESG issues. Looking at the market, green bonds still dominate the sustainable finance market globally, but it is interesting to see some of the, the newer product categories, including green and social use of proceeds instruments, um, as well as sustainability linked instruments. And these are really fast playing catch up. We have arranged a number of such bonds and loans this year already. In partnership with the JSE listed healthcare group, Netcare, we arranged and brought to market the first sustainability linked bond earlier this year. We've also partnered with Woolworths Holdings Limited to execute the first sustainability linked loan in the retail, a South African retail sector. And alongside Tough Limited, which is the Trust for Urban Housing Finance, we arranged South Africa's very first social bond to be listed on the sustainability segment of the JSE. Most recently, we issued our own Standard Bank senior bond, uh, senior social bond under our sustainable bond framework, where we also acted as the sole arranger and social bond coordinator. This bond in particular is aimed at raising funding to support the financing of affordable housing um, in respect of mortgage loans in this market with a focus on women borrowers. The activity in this segment certainly doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Absolutely, and it's always best to borrow to women. You can ask the Grameen Bank. So as we see the evolution in the capital markets, what's next for sustainable finance, Sasha? So as we mentioned, the pandemic has really resulted in a significant increase in the issuance of social use of proceeds instruments. These are instruments specifically focused on raising funding to support social projects or social impact areas. And we expect this trend to continue. Um, we also acknowledge how important the social investment is for emerging economies, such as those that we operate in as a group. Given Africa's unmet energy needs, we also expect to see a wave of decentralized green energy projects as corporates and municipalities look to secure reliable, sustainable and affordable power supply, while also furthering their own ESG agendas. The sustainability linked category of financing that I mentioned previously has and will continue to see significant growth. The flexibility afforded by these instruments is very attractive to issuers and borrowers, and investors are also attracted by the tangible improvement indicators and the ability to actually demonstrate the impact of their investments. We issued our first ever green bond last year via a private placement with the International Finance Corporation, the proceeds of which were allocated to fund eligible renewable energy assets. This was also aligned to our sustainable bond framework. The issuance was a very important step for our sustainable finance unit and for us as an issuer. We expect to see increased activity in the sustainable finance segment, and we expect this to be driven both by the demand side, i.e. investors, but also the supply side. In the first half of 2021, we saw origination activity in excess of 9 billion rand across a number of transactions. All right, so quite a broad conception of sustainability there. Mercy, I'd like to bring you back into the conversation and now really hone in on what socioeconomic needs, your project that you've referred to, um, what socioeconomic needs does it fulfill and how does it align to uh, Standard Bank selected C impact areas and also the ability to attain some of these global goals? The biomass industry in itself is a very big employer. They've got about 12,000 jobs that were created in just harvesting and processing biomass in the country for the various value chain activities. And we're looking to growing that even more and solving for the unemployment challenge that we have in the country with almost 40% of our, our unemployment rate uh, being recorded there formally. Um, from the economic sector. So that's the one challenge. If you just look at the, the mushroom farmers that are going to emanate from this opportunity as we are going to scale the production and the capacity in order to deliver on the goals that we've got for our project, that's a big 
both employment creation and an enterprise development opportunity. If you just look at the machinery and equipment that we have deployed in this pilot phase already, most of that was built and developed by Namibian entrepreneurs that are already operating in those sectors and we were able to derive lots of benefits and innovation uh, for the Namibian entrepreneurs out of the machinery and equipment that we're using um, in these new materials that we're testing and researching on. Our architectural and engineering fraternity is at the forefront of this new building methods and that skills development that also ties into um, employment creation and enterprise development. And there is so much more to this that I cannot uh, share with you at the moment as we are in a research and development phase, but we're extremely excited by the impact opportunity that this presents. Absolutely, and the relevance as well, Mercia, given that uh, the African continent in general has more than half of the total population being young people. Many of them are self-starters, so it's very, very important to locate many of your goals within that new demographic. Thank you so much, ladies. From what I'm hearing from you, it's ultimately about corporate citizenship and ensuring that always you're thinking about the triple bottom lines. Thank you to Sasha and to Mercia. Now, it's a remarkable impact that uh, you're being able to make through the work that you're doing. And what I've learned from this discussion is that when we put the emphasis on the social, on the environment and the economic impact in the work that we do, it's not just about the financial returns, but it's about what's beneficial to the societies in which you live and work and everybody then wins. So thanks again to Mercia, to Sasha, to David, and for all that have joined us for this particular session. If you'd like to find out more about Standard Bank's C strategy and the impacts being made, please visit the on-demand section of this platform. I'll now hand over to Arno Danica to speak about the group's financial roadmap. Thank you.